Most of us know that Thomas A. Edison invented the vacuum tube by accident while working on the light bulb invention. He had not quite perfected his light bulb and was looking for a way to prolong the filament life. He added an extra component to the light bulb and put a positive voltage on this component and he noticed that current would flow from the filament to this new positive component. He called this the Edison effect. Now this was the first diode. Certainly you couldn't make an amplifier out of it, but it was a vacuum tube with two components in it, and that's why it's called a diode. It has two components. It has a place for electricity to go in. That's called a cathode. And it has a place for electricity to come out, which is called a plate. Most amplifiers that use tube rectifiers will have a diode or more commonly a twin diode. Twin diode would be the same uh, setup, but you would have two plates so that you could have a full wave rectifier instead of a half wave rectifier. Now about 1906, December 31st it was, a young fellow by the name of John Hogan Jr who was a high school boy, was working for Lee DeForest. And they discovered that they could actually add another component to the diode and control the flow of voltage. Now this was significant because with this invention, amplification became possible. This invention was called the triode. And it too has a place for the electricity to enter we're going to call this again the cathode, just like the diode. And it has a place for the electricity to exit, which is called a plate, just like on the diode. But on the triode, there's a third element called a control grid, or grid. And this control grid controls how much current can flow through the tube. Since there are three elements, or three parts, this is called a triode. Triodes are used in guitar amplifiers generally for preamp stages. A 12X7, for instance, is a triode. As a matter of fact, a 12X7 is a double triode. It would be two triodes in one glass container. Two tubes, yes, two tubes in one. Uh, triodes are used to amplify uh, the guitar signal. For instance, when you plug your guitar into your input, let's say you have a guitar and you plug it into your input jack on your amp. The input jack has a resistor going to ground, which goes back to your guitar, and the top of that resistor goes to the control grid of a tube and it can control with a minor signal it can make a major signal now you can add more elements to a tube for instance we can add a fourth element and make a tetrode and even yet five elements and make a pentode more common are the pentodes. These are usually used for output tubes. They have the same three elements as a triode, but then they have two more elements. They have a screen grid, which is connected to a very high voltage power supply. And what this does is it attracts electrons from the cathode. When the electrons get to the screen grid, since the screen is so, um, since the screen does not have near as much mass as the plate, the electrons go right on past the screen and hit the plate. Now to keep them from bouncing back, there's another grid called a suppressor grid. This grid is usually tied internally to the cathode. 
But in the case of some pentodes, it may have its own connection, in which case we would just tie it to the cathode outside. Um, both of these are to help with the efficiency of the tube. Pentodes are generally used for output tubes in guitar amplifiers.